So we have a very short green season this year because of the way not only that Easter falls earlier than some of years, right? We measure the calendar from Easter Sunday, and that's based on a lunar calendar. But also next week, February 2nd, is a Sunday, and that's a major prayer book holy day. So we will be keeping that day in the White Testaments and looking at those readings rather than the Sunday after Epiphany. The week after that, we're back into the work of the to the Jesuits. So this is the last for Rob to read until June. Uh, but the Epiphany season is so important for us to grasp as we head towards that season of penance that is the pre Lent and Lenten season. Because we need to be grounded in the reality of who Jesus Christ is as he has manifested, right? The word epiphany means to manifest or show forth who he is as the second person of the Holy Trinity. Because Jesus Christ is God's Son, he is God himself in the second person of that Trinity. He is manifested to us in various ways the showing forth of the glory of the Godhead. On January 6th, of course, the Magi come to worship Jesus. We talk about the symbolism of the various gifts as Jesus as king and priest and sacrifice. We then look at his fighting in the temple at the age of 12, where he already has to be about his father's business. Because he's caught for the time, even as a 12-year-old, he is able to preach and answer questions about the glory of God. And he feels that then, because it's who he is, it is his mission and ministry. Then, of course, last week we look at the baptism of Jesus. And we have heard that glorious vision of the Trinity, where God the Father speaks, God the Son is baptized, and God the Holy Spirit, the third person, descends upon him <coughs> in the form of a dove. And so we have all three persons of the Holy Trinity present. Today's story is one people just love. I mean, after all, who doesn't love the idea of having water? Uh, and so the wedding feast at Cana of Galilee certainly has a lot of popular approval. But it is a wonderful manifestation, a wonderful epiphany story, because it shows us several different layers about who Jesus is and what his mission and ministry will be. This particular lesson could be a six-week teaching series all about the different ways about this particular story. But we won't do that in one sermon. But I want to bring up a couple of important points about it. First of all, we have the reality that Jesus as God is not constrained to the laws of nature and physics. I mean, we all know, at least we, I hope we understand, that water does become wine, but not instantly, right? The water has to go through the soil, up through the roots of the vine, out into the grapes. The grapes have to be picked, then they have to be juiced and fermented. Before they become wine. So in, in that sense, water does become wine. But in this particular case, of course, Jesus, at the request of his mother, is beyond the laws of nature. And is able to just at an instant make water to wine. We don't even get a sense of him doing something other than instructing them to fill up the, the containers with water. There's no magic formula that's there's nothing that's done that can concoct it, right? We know that in healing ministry, sometimes Jesus does things like makes mud and puts it on somebody's eyes, or he spits and touches somebody's tongue in their ears. Other times, he just says, because you're faithful, you're healed. Or because you're faithful, your loved one's healed. And at that very moment, healing and change occurs. We know also that he's beyond, he is beyond, the need for physics and natural law when he walks on water. Again, not something we commonly can do. And yet Jesus can have do so and have Peter do so because he's God. He's manifested in that way. So Jesus, at the command of his, or at the request of his mother, commands the servants to fill the containers with water. Now, this, of course, is a nice reminder that if we're going to ask God, we're going to ask the saints to pray for us to God as we might ask you know, each other to pray for us. The same answer is going to occur, right? What is it that Mary says to the servants? Do whatever he tells you. Right? That's the hard part. I want to tell God in my prayer exactly how we should do everything. Um, and, and you know what? You laugh. 
taken to the steward of the feast. Now here comes a couple more manifestations. But we are, it's obvious that Jesus is God because of the laws of nature. But it's actually the idea of changing water into wine that is in another level
That's a wonderful epiphany moment. And it's the type of good wine which we can drink deeply and rejoice. In the name of